Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about raw diets for our pets and the ingredients. If you're joining me for the first time, I would like to welcome you. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I am not a dog dietitian or a dog nutritionist. However, I am pouring a whole lot into this for you guys, so stay put. To achieve optimal health, animals must consume the foods that they were designed to eat. Dogs and cats are carnivorous animals and they need to eat fresh whole prey to obtain optimal health. A whole prey diet should consist of raw meat as well as edible bone and organs. I have a tip for you guys. So stay tuned until the end of this video because I will tell you one of the superfoods you do not want to exclude from your dog's diet. Though we humans have domesticated dogs and cats, we cannot deny their system and biology remains the same as it was hundreds of years ago. Domestication of dogs and cats has altered their physical appearance. However, their genetic makeup is the same as their wild ancestors. Keep in mind, pet food is a new concept to these carnivores and has only been around for the last hundred years. Let's talk about that pet food. Our current animal population has created a place for recycling in the human food industry. Grains that fail inspection, uninspected pieces and parts that fail the seafood industry, leftover restaurant grease, downer cows, dead farm animals, diseased livestock, and roadkill all must be picked up and disposed of through a process called rendering. Rendering is a process that converts all sorts of animal protein into raw materials for the pet food industry. These raw materials are purchased by huge pet food manufacturers who then blend the rendered fat and meat with unnecessary starch. They add a bulk vitamin and mineral supplement extruded at high temperatures creating all types of toxic reactions. Then they sell it to us at a slightly increased profit, calling it pet food. Dogs and cats have a very short GI tract as compared to vegetarian animals. Carnivorous animals are meant to consume foods with heavy pathogen loads. Essentially, they were designed to get foods in and get foods out very quickly, the opposite of our digestive system. Their diet desires lots of variety considering their diet did not evolve to eat sterile foods. They have digestive tracts that are engineered to be resilient and handle the loads of naturally occurring bacteria that are present in the foods that they eat. Keep in mind, pet foods is a relatively new concept to dogs and cats within the last 100 years. However, remember, dogs and cats have scavenged for their meals over the last thousand years, as major pet food companies have produced pet food containing corn, rice, wheat, and potatoes. Our carnivorous pets have not had a flurry of evolution to process these foreign foods. Dogs and cats are some of the most resilient animals on the planet. They are obviously able to obtain really significant nutritional abuse when it comes to their dietary needs. There is no doubt that degenerating occurs as a result even though sudden death doesn't. They consume these inappropriate foods which keep them alive but far from the thriving status of their ancestors. Over the last 100 years, pet owners have fed their dogs and cats a high carbohydrate, low moisture diet creating significant metabolic and physical stress that now plagues our pet population. So what is the optimal diet for a pet carnivore? Dogs and cats need quality proteins and small amounts of veggies and fruits. The veggies and fruits are the source of antioxidants and fiber that animals need now that they are not hunting whole prey. Animals need fresh whole foods that are moisture rich. Animals don't need grain fillers, artificial preservatives, additives, chemicals, byproducts, or processed foods. Even though they can consume some processed foods, they were never designed to consume an entire lifetime of processed food, guys. So what is an appropriate diet for a dog or cat that is nutritionally complete for their species? Low carb, high moisture, and unprocessed with a variety of fresh whole food. Let's talk about the ingredients needed to achieve this. Keep in mind, the raw diet must follow the whole animal carcass model. They need muscle meat, they need organ meat, they need ground up bone, they need some tripe, which is stomach, 
They need ground up fruits and vegetables. Sometimes I use Gerber's baby food for the fruits and vegetables source. This diet is often referred to as the 80-10-10 raw diet, which is 80% muscle meat, 10% bone, 10% organ meat, half of which should be liver, which is a hormone secreting organ. Meal proportion should be approximately two to 3% of their body weight. Now my dog Gus is 65 pounds, so the feeding formula is 65 times 0.03, which is 3%, equals 1.95 pounds of food per day. You need to incorporate at least three different protein sources into their diet. You know, protein sources like chicken, beef, pork, turkey, fish, those are all protein sources. Half of the diet or more should consist of red meat because it is a more vitamin rich source. I bet you're wondering what is that superfood that I mentioned earlier in this video. Well, thank you for sticking around. Your dog will thank you. Raw egg with the shell. Don't throw it away, guys. It's a superfood. Egg shells pack a large amount of calcium for your dog, which supports strong bones, heart health, and hormone function. Crack one raw egg with the shell on your dog's meal every other day or so and let them reap the benefits of that super food. Today I went shopping, grocery shopping for my dog. I also went to the pet store and picked up a little something for him there. I'm gonna share that with you in just a minute. This is how my day went. So guys, I just wanted to show you real quick what I picked up from all these. I love that store. We got a butternut squash, wonderful for the dog. I actually think I might cook that for my family though. We got some flounder. Remember with fish, we want to freeze it first. This was already frozen, so I am gonna put it in the freezer. And when I'm ready to add fish into his meals, other than sardines, which I did pick up. Sardines, they are like 79 cents a can. Notice that they are in spring water, not oil. All right, all these has all this. Of course we need freezer bags. I got some burgers. Sometimes it's easier to just grab a burger, you know, for the meat, for the meal. Obviously got some chicken. This is the half, chicken halves, the thighs and legs. I haven't attempted to give Gus a whole chicken leg yet, thigh and leg. I see everybody's doing it. I'm a little nervous. Um, I talked to the butcher today at my grocery store. They will not grind the bone in the meat for me. He said they, they don't usually do that because obviously the bones could cause problems with the grinder. So, still haven't figured out how to get the bone into my into the meat. It's very important. We don't want to deprive them of bone, guys. Remember organ, muscle meat, bone, it's all very important. And we need those omega-3 acids too, which we can get from sardines. Pretty awesome. For fresh vegetables, I grabbed some broccoli florets, like 79 cents a bag at Aldi. You can't beat that store, guys. Um, as I'm understanding, we're supposed to puree the vegetables and the fruits because uh, it's easier for them to digest. So I do have a little small processor that I can simply use to, to kind of chop up these fresh veggies that I will be giving guests. Coconut oil, extremely good for dogs. Very inexpensive at Aldi's as well. Um, organic, if you guys have an Aldi near you, it's worth it. Please go and check it out. So we are to add a little bit of coconut oil at times, and I'll tell you, Gus loves it. I use coconut oil for myself sometimes for uh, lotion for my skin. And as soon as I open the coconut oil, he comes running to me and starts licking my hand. So. Um, I'm just mixing in a little bit of this every now and then into his food will be an absolutely wonderful thing to do for him and I know he'll eat it. So here's another option. At Aldi they had, this is baby food, it's all natural, no preservatives, uh, nothing fake, no artificial fakeness in here. We know butternut squash is really good for them. Uh, this, is a, this is a way that we can get those vegetables into them, you know, versus having to go through the trouble of chopping up these other types of vegetables and you know and, pro and food processors and stuff like that so and fruits as well because we know fruits are important for them too so you can see like like this particular one is apple and sweet potato so that's something that uh, we can do to add into their food so I did buy these they were 79 cents a piece at Aldi I mean, you can't beat it so this is our haul for the day guys some stuff to start with. I am not completely feeding Gus raw 
he still gets one at least one meal a day or every other day that is kibble I went to pet value today and I got some new kibble so I'll share that with you here in a second by the way I love you more than biscuits and gravy so I did it guys I went to pet value and I bought the origin pet food that is from what I can tell the next best thing to raw next best thing as I said there's nothing that can replace fresh whole food but I did it I got a 12 ounce bag for free when I purchased a four and a half pound bag totaling $25 for this highly rated dog food now you're probably wondering well why would she do that she was just talking about all this raw food that she's planning to feed her dog she went to the store and bought all this food yes I did but listen, I'm still very nervous. I have a lot to learn. I received my book. I've been reading it. I'm not through it yet, but um, this is the book that I recommended last week. I'm excited to learn more. I'm not, you know, we're talking about your, your dog's health. I, I'm not gonna rush into this. I'm not going to make all these changes and hope that I did it right. So I purchased this very, very good quality dog food that's still kibble. But as you can see, it's the ingredients list is pretty impressive. And we learned all about ingredient lists last week, guys. If you missed it, go back and check it out. I am definitely going to feed Gus some raw meals. And then he's also going to get some of the origin kibble for different meals. Until I'm comfortable making the switch. I may never do it. I may always do some of which, some of this, some of that, but I'm gonna really be conscious about the food that I put in his bowl. So next week is part three to this series. What are we gonna be doing? We're gonna cook together. Well, cook, if you consider messing around with raw food cooking. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna make some recipes together. That's what we're gonna do next week. So please tune in, guys. If you haven't subscribed, to my channel please do i don't want you to miss out i would love to have you here with us we're pretty awesome thank you for tuning in